This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hey there, hey there. It's Jeff Cardavin welcoming you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, May the 17th, 1983, was when the Edmonton Oilers, the brash Edmonton Oilers of the, 19, the early 1980s, would get a wake up call after losing game four of the Stanley Cup finals against the New York Oilers, making the Oilers win their fourth and hopefully last Stanley Cup in history. Edmonton would take on the New York Islanders in the finals. The Islanders had been to three, the last three finals and won all 80 against the Flyers in Game 6 on the famous Bob Nystrom goal. 1981, when they beat the upstart Minnesota North Stars. It'll be 10 years before we hear the name Minnesota North Stars in the finals. In 1982, when they crushed the Vancouver Canucks and the fine powder in four straight. It was hard to believe. Well, the Canucks came from a very crappy conference that basically there were no major favorites, minus Edmonton, before L.A. got to them. Anyway. The 83 finals would be the fourth straight finals of expansion teams. Not, none of the original six. The others stunned NHL fans by reaching the finals four years after the merger with the NHL and their former home, the WHA. This is also the most recent time that an NHL team has won the cup four years in a row. And the only time a North American team has won four straight titles in a league with more than 20 teams. Didn't know that. That's kind of weird. So anyway, this was amazing because the league competitions have been for many years. So anyway, since 1983, no sports team has won four straight championships and no NHL team has won more than back-to-back. -back. It's happened several times. The Penguins are the last to be back-to-back. -back. They did it in 16 and 17. This was the first of A Street finals that a team from Alberta contested the finals, which was amazing because the province of Alberta got to see eight straight Stanley Cup finals. And for the first time, finals games would be played in Alberta. So that's amazing. So anyway. Edmonton went to the finals via the Winnip via Winnipeg, Calgary, and Chicago, only dropping one game in those three playoff rounds. They basically scored more than six goals a game and all that. Edmonton did have a chance to win the Stanley Cup in 1923, but they were the Edmonton Eskimos of the Western Canadian Hockey League. They would play Ottawa in the Stanley Cup finals, held in Vancouver, and Ottawa won the two-game series. New York... Uh, the New York Islanders were taking care of Washington, New York, as in the and Boston to reach the finals. Which was amazing. Now, Edmonton, of course, in 82, were the class of the Campbell Conference. But unfortunately, they let their guard down and lost in an upset, a massive upset, a five game, best of five, first, when best of five was, when the first round was best of five before 1987. So anyway, Edmonton lost the big game five at home and all that. Yes, that was the Miracle of Manchester series, but they could have won game five on home turf. Billy Smith was amazing. He would limit the others to just six goals in those four games. So basically 1.5 goals a game. That's amazing. Well that Edmonton fans did not like him because of his slashes. Being a goaltender and all that. Billy Smith would get a penalty for slash a five minute call for slashing when Gretzky one time. And he did dive in game four, getting Andy Van Hellman to give Glenn Anderson a five minute penalty. Gretzky would have four assists for the others, but not score himself. No no other was successfully assigned to Mark Gretzky. Basically, the other tactics were rope a dope and all that. However, the Sutter brothers, Dwayne and Brent, actually were the major part and all that. And Bossy would be 
the guy who scored the Stanley Cup winning goal. So the others took a giant win, winning two nothing, six three, five one, and now four to two. However, after game four, the others had to walk past the other dressing room and were expecting massive celebrations. However, when they saw the veteran Islanders just basically celebrating by being iced down and basically trying to be treated for injuries, they realized they needed to grow up and they basically needed a new mentality. And thanks to that, the Edmonton Oilers used that mentality on the New York Islanders and won the 80% of the cup from them. All that. The New York, the last New York Islanders home team, a team to get the Stanley Cup, had Brian Trache, Brent Sutter, Butch Goring, wow, he was still around, Clark Gillies, Wayne Merrick, very underrated, Dwayne Sutter, Bob Bourne, Greg Gilbert, Max Howland. Max Howland? Man, that's a random name. He played 152 games in the NHL, but you got to stand the cup. Mike Bossy, the legend, Bobby Nystrom, Billy Carroll, John Tonelli, Anders Kalor, all that. Dennis Potten, Mike McEwen. I'm reading down Cherry's autobiography, by the way, and mentioned that Cherry, Coach McEwen. McEwen put, played for the 79 uh, uh, Rangers in the Stanley Cup Finals. Thomas Janssen, Paul Boutier, that's a weird name, Ken Morrow, Stephen Pearson, Gordon Lane, Dave Langevin, and the goalies, Billy Smith and Willie Mugelson. So that's amazing. Lots of players um, got to be part of the Islanders four Stanley Cups. All that. Mike Bossy, Bob Borden, Clark Gillies, Butch Goring, Anders Killer, Gordon Lane, Dave Langevin, Wayne Merrick, Ken Morrow, Bob Nystrom, Stephen Pearson, Tony Fontaine, Billy Smith, Dwayne Sutter, John Tonelli, and Brian Trotche all play for all four Stanley Cup winning teams for the New York Islanders. That's pretty good. I had no idea about Dwayne Sutter. I thought he played for someone else. Or he started out in the 81 or 82. But no. So yeah, the New York Islanders won the Stanley Cup. And all that. So, big four game series. And if I ever talked positively about the New York Islanders and Blue Shirt Underground finds out, I'll get the nasty shut up cutter treatment. But anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I'll do.